the privilege this morning that we are following the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. We all of us this morning here with my beloved brother, brother Evangelist Michael Hayes and his congregation. We give you a hearty Sugar Hill welcome. Amen? Amen. God is indeed good. He's indeed great. of the sun even unto the going down and there are some familiar faces thank God that we are here as one body in Christ amen we are all God's children so we give God the highest note of praise as we come this morning to worship him amen, amen. hallelujah this is the day that the Lord has made amen. come on let us rejoice yes. let us rejoice this morning and be glad in it God has given us and gone, but we are privileged this morning to be here. Amen. And the word of God said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. We are approaching the closing of another year. Look how quickly October has passed. Look how quickly October has passed in the split second. And we're into the month of November, this second last month of the year. Amen. And we give God the highest thought of praise this morning. Hey, you. 
Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Put your hands in, in, again to for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We're so glad to be here uh, today and, and I'm so grateful to your pastor, the relationship that we established when we were in Panama. But I want to say to you something today. Even as uh, I got up this morning, um, I was just thinking in terms of the showers, the rain. And you know, it's a wonderful day. The Bible says that today is the day that the Lord has made, and we need the purpose in our hearts to rejoice in it and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Doesn't matter how you feel, and I want to say to you today, even in the midst of worship, um, that you need not only to base your life on feelings, but they need to be an established purpose in your heart um, towards God. Doesn't matter how you feel that you're going to praise God. Amen? Amen? So we just want to give God thanks. Father, we just want to clear the atmosphere. We want to give you thanks again for this wonderful assembly here. Um, we want to thank you, God, for the pastor. We thank you for the members. We thank you, God, for all that you're about to do. And Father, all that we're asking you today to do, God, is to use us. We, we are nothing by ourselves. But Lord, we ask that your anointing will be resident today in this house. Father, we Ask for the promotion of your spirit, your anointing upon every life, every hearer. And God, we want to thank you, God, for all that you are going to do. Amen. We just spend a few minutes um, to get a few batteries uh, for the for the lights and nine volts. Yes. So just give us a few minutes. So I don't know if you know that that, that song. I don't know what you came to do, but I know what I came to do. I came to praise the Lord. Can we do that? Sing as loud as we can to we get the the the, the, the mic sorry.
worthy to be praised. So this morning we will call upon our God this morning who is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we're going to sing a melody of songs to start. We'll have to continue our worship this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
give y'all this 10 minute turn and service back over to our evangelist McLean. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the goodness of the Lord. Come on, you can do better than that. Glory be to God. Something you wonder what to do. Hey, you're in this earth having to deal with all of the, the changes. One day the sun is hot, and then the rain is coming. Some folks are experiencing across the world floods and typhoons and earthquakes. So each time you think that you need to complain, I'm gradually I'm learning more and more that a grateful heart attracts the blessings of God. So it doesn't matter how things are spinning, what you've been told by your doctor, what diagnosis they've been. I want to say to you that your diagnosis does not necessarily have to be a negative prognosis. Your life can excel beyond all the stuff that has been said about you. Because people thought that you would have been dead. Some even think that you should be dead so many times. But the Lord's faithfulness has assured you that you are here and that you have a right to praise God. Put your hands together again for the Lord. Praise God. This morning I um, was privileged, I'm, I am privileged to have my wife with me. Sometimes it is not always um, convenient to have her because of other responsibilities. And so but this, this month is unique, um, just four days, uh, four days away from um, our 32nd um, wedding anniversary. Um, and I really want to give God thanks. You know, on a normal basis, our church would have wanted us to be at our home church today. But we figured that today would have been a good day to step out of our comfort zone and be a blessing in whatever way we can. I'm going to ask her to come at this time to share. Um, I don't know at times what she's going to share, but Han, just come and just share. Share your heart uh, for a few minutes. Um, I just want to say to you, wherever you are in the way that you um, exist and live, don't come yourself short of God's blessings. Because God is I want to say I give God all the honor and all the glory for being in his presence this morning. I thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity for being here. Thank you, members, for giving us an impact, the opportunity to be here to minister to you. And I want to say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would have been this morning, but I thank God for his grace and his mercy because the word of God says it endures forever. Not just for today, but it endures forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy enjoy it forever. I want to stand this morning and I just want to say, Lord, I love you and Lord, I thank you because as I said just now, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I can join with a songwriter who said, through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. It's grace that has brought me safe thus far. No, I said it is grace and not grace. mercy that has brought me through. You know, I was sat in and I, as I was reflecting on my life, I've been through so many toils and so many snares. But I want to say to you that in the midst of it all, that God has been there and that God has been good. And I want to say to you, even in this pandemic that we're going through, I want to say to you this morning, trust, not in me, not in the pastor, but trust in the Lord. trust God, I don't know where I would have been today. But because of trusting him in every situation, in every vantage point in my life that seemed difficult, I trust God. And I want to say that he has carried me. The song says, when I've come to the end of myself, Father, carry me. And I want to say, I can say that from experience. I've been through, I've been through. If I stay here and tell you all the things I've been through, we'll probably be here till about nine tonight. But I just And, 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 and as I sit here, I want to say that I thank God for, for my husband. I want to say that he has been a strong tower in my life at times. There were rocky roads. Nobody can tell that there's a perfect marriage because they're not perfect people. 
day, the next month, I will be going to be 50, to be 50. My husband says, keep forgetting my age. But I'm going to be 56 years old in December. I say, if it's God. Because the doctors gave me a death sentence and they said when I was at the age of 32 that I had ovarian cancer. And they said that I only had about two more years to live because I was at stage three headed for stage four. And I mean, we walked into that other doctor and I was like the woman with the issue of blood this morning. I was saying this diagnosis cannot be right. I was going from doctor to doctor because I, I said I need to get second opinions. And I went from one doctor to another doctor. Every time I tell some person, they would tell me, try this body, this body real good. And it would be going from doctor to doctor like the woman with the issue of blood. And I remember the, the final doctor we went to, a girlfriend of mine, she called and she said, there was this guy that is really, really good. And he's in here since. And I want you to try him before you make any other decision. And I want to tell that was the worst one I went to. The one that was supposed to be the best was the worst. Because he looked at me and my son was getting ready to do the 11 plus exam. And he said to me, where are you at? After this cancer, I don't think you're going to even see your son make this because <laughs> this is far beyond us. And he said to me, the monk of, I'm going to detox the entire body. So he took me off of all sugars, all meats. I came off of a diet where I was only drinking pumpkin soup and snacking on almond nuts um, for, my, for, my, for, my, for my food. I'm drinking boiled water because he said, I don't want you buying the bottled water so you're not sure what is in your bottled waters, but boil your own water, put it in the fridge and drink it. And I kept on that diet for about a whole year and I dropped the weight. But when I went back, the cancer in me had grown lumps and sun. It was growing even bigger. Even though the weight was coming off, I thought the cancer was shrinking. But I want to tell you about God. And I remember when the doctor looked at me and he, my husband said to me, we looked and we said, well, we can't afford this because the amount of money that we had to be paying to me and tea this was a thousand dollars on a weekly basis. Where am I going to get it from? Uncle God is my supplier, but I put my trust in him. And I remember when we got into the car, my husband looked at me, I looked at him and he said, the Lord, that's what the doctor said, but that's not God's report. Whose report do you believe? And we want to believe the Lord for things. And you know, my husband is a traveler, so he called all the different pastors different churches and they went in churches closed for praying fast on Wednesdays and on Sunday evenings they were praying fasting for me and I want to tell you that we saw the mighty hand of God I decided to take the surgery I had the surgery but the Lord had already confirmed to me that you are going to take the surgery but at the end of it then you are going to be cancer free they're not going to find what they're looking for I want to tell you when they opened me up they said to me I, I asked them after why did the cancer why did I stay so long in surgery I was in surgery from about nine o'clock never came down till about nine o'clock in the night time the doctor said we, we had to take a different road it's something completely different completely different we are even appalled at what we saw what we had to do he said but we had to give you a blood transfusion because of the monk of blood that you lost and that was one of the reasons that you had to stay in the intensive care unit so long but i said my god is good and i am cancer free today and your confidence in God because he is he is the one that has the final say not the doctors we go to them to get advice because we are not trained in that area but I want to say you can trust God you can trust God this morning church you can I only tell that you can trust God you can trust God you know when I turned 50 years old it was December the 29th and I remember I went to the old years night service that we had that year I mean pastor keep saying I don't know why but somebody in here for next year, has to call on 911. And she was stressing this thing with calling on 911. And we know that 911 is the emergency number. And I want to tell you, two weeks after that, I got to a transport board bus. And I was standing at the bus stop, just waiting to cross. And the next thing I know, I was over a hedge. The bus lit me over a hedge. I was wrapped up in cantaline wire all around me. The bus exploded right there. All the engine oil had my head, my clothes, my uniform soaked. I mean, even when we got to the FMH, before I could even sit on the bed, good, the thing just eat all the paper up. And I look back and I say, God, this was a, a, a out of body experience. Up to now, I cannot understand how I got over that hedge. I can't understand it. I can't understand how Catalan why it was all around me and still my skin is not bruised. I can't understand how engine oil, which would have been so hot, have us called me because that's the God we serve. And as I was sitting there waiting to be taken to the hospital, you know what the pastor said came right back to me? I now understand why she said. 
said that they had to call 911 because it's, 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 it's Psalms 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. And even as we go through this pandemic, I want to say to you, don't come out from under the shadows of the Almighty. That's where our dwelling place Trust God. It's nothing too hard. There's nothing impossible with our God. God bless you, and I come get a joy and a privilege to be among you this morning. Glory be to God. I have trust someone in this service. Maybe you've been through something traumatic, and you never told anyone. But you know what? Your testimony is your testimony. And the Bible says that we overcome by what? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word. Come on, by the come on, turn to somebody and say, I have a word that is sealed in God. When you have a testimony, no one can take it from you. And there's so many things each time I think back about that situation with my wife. Because where she landed, there were two high tensile steel, half inch high tensile steel that were just I mean, we still have the pictures. It, it, sometimes we don't understand it. But I, I want to say to you that you, God has kept your life for such a time as this. Amen. And God knows what is coming against you. Maybe it's a rough marriage. Maybe it's children that are wayward. Maybe it's a husband that tell you off. Maybe it's family that don't want to have anything to do with you. But God says it's not your time yet. And no one can stop you if God says it's not your time. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, Ah, it's not my time yet to leave. So we want to encourage you to stay focused. There's a young man here, and I'm just longing to, to hear him. Um, Nathan is his name. We're going to ask him to come at this time and share special um, with us. Put your hands together for this young man. He's from the Christian Mission Church. Um, there was that strong land, the strong land Christian Mission Church.
What a wonderful, put your hat, song, it's a landing, put your hands together for you. I want to say to those of you that, those of you that have come out today, um, it's a long week ahead of us. And we don't know what, what lies before us. And we just want to be in a position to hear from God. Today we have our speaker, Minister Rosalind Cumberbatch. Uh, but before she comes, can we all just stand? stand just lift your hands up before the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be okay, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands up. Glory be to God. And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am weak. Because of what?
supported, yes, it is March, by the family Faith Freedom Barbados, relating to the same-sex civil unions, proposed by the government in the film speech. Let us pray rich, righteousness, but prevail, and all our decision-making at the highest level. November 3rd represents a year since the special 100-year celebration in Barbados of the Christian of Panama, Inc., whose members of Panama, USA, Cuba, and Colombia fellowship with us here in 2019 during the period of November 1st to 4th. We are indeed thankful for the cooperation, participation, and fellowship renewed over the past years. Prayer and fasting will continue at home until further notice. Please be fervent in prayers for the family of our dear departed, retired superintendent of Emmanuel Christian Mission, the Reverend Dr. Winston Springer, who passed away during the last week after a short period of hospitalization in the USA. Let us observe a moment of silence in his honor. Christian Mission Church building project is at the roof stage. We solicit your continued prayers and monetary support. Reverend Lennox Riggins is on leave from pastoral and, and administrative duties from October 20th until November 17th with his son Christian visiting the United States of America. He asks for your continual prayers on their behalf. Please be guided by the schedule for our Christian Mission Family International online time broadcast. Kindly submit your schedules for the month of December. Sunday, November the 1st, Emmanuel Christian Mission, New York, 8 a.m. Sunday, November 8th, Emmanuel Christian Mission, New York, 8 a.m. Sun Sunday, November 15th, Mount Zion Tabernacle, 6, 6 p.m. Sunday, November 22nd, to be announced. Sunday, November 29th, Panama Christian Mission. The treasures of each church are requested to confirm by November 8th the total amount of pastors, offerings, and faithies submitted to headquarters for the period of January 1st to October 31st. This is to facilitate reconciling any differences before the final figures at December 31st. Continue fervent in prayers for various ministries of the Christ Church International, sick and shut-ins, worldwide conditions, families of the dear departed, and the salvation of lost souls. Thank you. Money to the church. Glad to be here, not on our stay. I have a song to sing that kisses is the glorious, but I want to. We worship leaders have me. I am blessed.
the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, oh, I want you to open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And we are going to read from verses 1 through 12. And then we are going to go on to chapter 4 and read verses 1 to 5. We'll share some other scriptures with you as we go along. Now Moses get the flock of Jack Thoreau, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. For he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land, a good land and a large unto the land flowing with milk and honey unto a place of the Canaanites and of the Hittites and of the Amorites and of the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me and I have also seen the oppression wherewith Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and cut it. And it became a rod in his hand. Yeah. Yeah that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have appeared unto thee. Father, this is your word. 
We thank you, O oh God, for shedding light upon the pages of your word. We thank you, O oh God, for, O oh God, delivering to the hearers today what you would have us to say. And may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and beauty. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, I want to speak to you on God will use what you have. God will use what you have. God not only heard the cry of the children of Israel, but he also saw the oppression. And that is in verse 9. And therefore, he selects a man, a messenger, to carry his message to Pharaoh. This morning I want you to know, church, that God hears and our God also sees. Hallelujah. And verse 1 gives us a bit of a background. When we start there, it gives us a bit of a background this really was. And then we go back, we could we would recall even in Exodus chapter 2, where we read how as a babe Moses was placed in a basket made with bulrushes. And there he was left by the side of the river. Pharaoh's daughter comes down and she sees this basket. And we know the rest of the story how she takes this child into her own home. Pharaoh, Moses is raised in Egypt, in the Pharaoh's household. But something happens. Moses is grown. He gets into a fight. He kills an Egyptian. And then Moses flees from Egypt. He flees to Midian, where he marries one of the Midianites. And he is now Jack Throws son-in-law. So let's pick up there. As Jethro's son-in-law, he is now responsible for the sheep. And in looking after the sheep, he takes them out to pasture. As he goes out, something special. He sees a burning bush. And what happens? There, the angel of God appears in this midst of this burning bush. yet not consumed. A strange happening. How could a bush be burning and yet it is not consumed? And so Moses turned aside to see what was going on here. You see what I recognize is that God had to get Moses God has to get our attention, people. Yeah. Saints of God, God needs our attention this morning. Sometimes we forget that God desires our praise, that God desires our worship. And we go along upon our busy schedules. And God has to remind us, huh? 
So hold up here. You didn't do what you were supposed to do this morning. You went on. But you forgot to pray. You forgot to read the word. This is me that you are depending on. And so God gets more of his attention by this strange and unusual phenomenon. A bush that appears to be burning yet not consumed. The word of God tells us, uses, uh, you, the word of God uses several times in Genesis chapter 16, chapter 21 and 22, 24 and 28, tells us the angel of the Lord. And sometimes when you, in this particular scripture, the context that we are looking at, when the word uses the angel of the Lord, it also uses the Lord. So we see that there is that link between the angel of the Lord and the Lord as he appeared unto Moses. But I want us to understand this morning the importance of what happened here. As we see fire, we know that fire in Bible times represents God's divine presence. And so it was here that God in getting Moses attention we see there is this fire of the burning bush that is not being consumed. And it reminds me when I this situation, it reminds me when we talk of fire uh, and God's divine presence, I am reminded of 1 Kings chapter 18, when Elijah called on God because here were the people looking at the prophets of Baal and not worshipping the true and living God. Even when 
when you go to school, you have children in a class. Some will pay attention and some wouldn't. And the teacher will know at the end of the term who paid attention and who didn't. Yep. It will be reflected in the grades. And I'm saying to you this morning, church, that in a conversation, there must be active listening. And there must also be dialogue. Because if there's a conversation and one person is talking all the time, that's not a conversation. Amen? Because that's a one-way situation. Somebody is just talking all the time, but you don't get a chance to have a word. Mm? This morning, we noticed that Moses had communication with God. And so we see that God says to Moses, he says, he calls his name twice. Moses, Moses. And then Moses' response was, here am I. Here am I. What is your response to God this morning? Yeah. When God calls you, when God wants to use you, when God wants to position you, are you going to respond this morning, here am I? But I also notice that Moses entered into further dialogue as God spoke to him. And God identifies who he is. He says, I am the God of your fathers. Let's look at verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Verse 6, let's go back up. Verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. I want us to understand who God is. And God says to Moses at the time, he is seen. He says, I have seen the affliction of my people. This is personal. Because the children of Israel, God has had possession them and called Israel his own. He made a covenant with Israel. And so he is saying, my people, I have heard their cries. But reason of their taskmasters said, Understands this morning. Let me say something to you, church. God knows you. God knows where you are at. God knows what you're going through. He has not fallen into your situation this morning. This was a personal, I know. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. God had chosen Israel. They were now in bondage. God saw and heard their cry and was willing to respond. But Moses started to find some excuses. Hmm? Verse 11. Who am I? Moses says, who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh. And that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And Moses goes into an argument. Deep conversation about who, who, who he was. How often do we face similar situations? When we have to 
cry out. God knows. God knows. God knows what you're facing this morning. Yes. Yes. God hears our cry. Saints, I want you to know that the word of God tells us in Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 4 Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. Have you called on him? Have you tried him this morning? Do you know that he hears and he answers? In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, it tells us there, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. And verse 16 of that chapter tells us, Let us therefore come out boldly yep. unto the throne of grace. God's help. Now, we need God's help today. He is our present. He is able to help us. But we have to call on him. We have to call this morning. Perhaps Moses argued in the way that he did. Who am I? Because God was asking him to go to Pharaoh. Remember the background that we said earlier. Moses had fled from Egypt because he had murdered a man. And so now God is saying to Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh. Remember, Pharaoh was looking for Moses to destroy him. And that's why Moses fled. He said, because this thing is known that I have killed this man, so Moses fled. And now here God is saying, Moses, I want you to go back to fear. Moses, who? Fear? Moses at this time is arguing. Who am I? Who am I? Why me? Moses saw himself as the murderer, the one who committed the sin against the Egyptian. And so he is fearing, why, why me Lord, why are you choosing me to go back to Pharaoh? Yeah. Moses saw himself as a nobody. But God saw Moses as somebody. Yep. Somebody that he wanted to use to carry a message. This morning I asked the question, what does God see in you this morning? Only if you can see what God sees this morning. What God sees in you, what God has deposited in you as a child of God this morning. For we know that, man, that God does not see as man sees. Right. For man will see the sin. But God sees the potential in the sinner. Man sees the outside. But by God sees the inside. Man sees the physical. But by God sees. 
sees the spiritual. God sees the heart. And God knew the heart of Moses. And so he says to Moses in chapter 4 and verse 1. And Moses answered and said, Behold, they will not believe me. Now hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. How often, when God calls us and gives us a testimony, you might be intimidated to share because you say, But Lord, if I know your salvation, yeah. and they know where I come from, they know that I used to be up there doing the things in the world that, I, uh, that you were not pleased with, and I used to be with them. How can I now go? And God says to Moses in verse 2, And the Lord said unto him, What is it that is in thine hand? And he said, A rod. <laughs> What is it that is in thine hand? My question to you, what is it that God has given you this morning? He has given you hands to work. In this pandemic, many persons have lost their jobs. And so they have got to look to some other source oh. to make amends, to make ends meet. To work out something. Yes. And so God has given you two wonderful hands oh. to labor. Mm -hmm. And so you will have seen that many persons have gone into cooking, some have gone into baking, some have gone into various yes. activities yes. using their hands mm -hmm. to make things work for them. God said to Moses, What is in your hand? Mm -hmm. yep. Moses answered, he says, he had a rod. Yes. This is not accidental, you know. Why would Moses be carrying a rod? Moses was a shepherd. Yes. It was the shepherd's responsibility to carry the rod and staff. Yes. What were they used for? and a guide for the sheep. This is not accidental, therefore, that Psalms 23 and verse 4 says, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yes. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Do we understand this this morning? Yes. Do we understand Psalm 23? Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to what is the purpose of the shepherd this morning? Yes. To care for the yes. Hallelujah. Who is our shepherd today? Yes. Our heavenly father. Yes. Isn't he more than able to care for you? Yes. Then somebody shout hallelujah. This morning. Yes, the Lord is our shepherd. Do we understand this this morning? Yes. Yes. Our shepherd looks after the sheep. Amen. And so God was saying to Moses, Here am I. You being a shepherd need to understand what is the purpose of the rod that you have in your hand. It is something to be used. Your protector. I am God. Yes. He is saying to Moses. And I am well able and capable of leading you. Yes. This morning, church, God is our shepherd. He is well able and capable of carrying us this morning, of leading us in the right direction this morning, of taking care of us today. Can we put our trust? 
Christ and confidence in Him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. The sheep trust the shepherd to protect them from harm in the most difficult situations. I say to you, this is the confidence that we have in our God to lead us, to protect us, to provide for us in the most difficult situations that we might face. Second Kings chapter four and verse one to seven, we see a story there of a woman who her husband had died. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Eli, Elijah. Elisha saying, thy servant, my husband is dead. Yes. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the, and the creditor is come. Yes to take unto him my two sons to be born me. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Uh -huh. Tell me, yep. what hast thou in the house? Yes. And he said, And she said, Thine handmaid hath not a thing in the house, save a pot of oil. And he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not of you. But when thou art coming, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, oh. and upon thy sons, yes. and thou shalt pour out upon it into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and her sons. Brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her sons, bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. Yeah. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children on the rest. What have we here this morning? First, we see God asking Moses, What is in your hand? I had to use what was in his hand. Here in the scripture, the prophet is asking this woman, What's in your house? She said, they ain't got nothing. It said, a little oil. Yes. What she said? A little oil. Yes. Yes. My heavenly father can take a little and make it much. Hallelujah. Amen. God was able to show up here. Elijah did not knew he did. Elijah knew he did not have. Elijah knew he did not have the money to buy out these two guys. But he said, as the spirit of God led him, he said, "What have you in your house?" He says a little oil. It was only a little. But little is much when God is in it. Hallelujah. And so God was able to multiply. Hallelujah. My God is a great multiplier this morning. For when even in the garden, Eve was created, He said to Eve and Adam, be fruitful and do what? Multiply. He was the first multiplier. You thought mass was no only now created? My God was the first person who was able to show you how to work mass out. Multiplication. Hmm? And so this woman was able, he said to her, go and burn. He did not say full vessels. to 
empty in order for you to put in more? Have you come here this morning full or have you come empty? Have you come full this morning or have you come empty? My Lord. Because as you came empty, you can receive from God this morning. But as you come full, there is nothing that God can do for you. We have to come empty. Come before his presence this morning. Expecting something from the Lord. What I notice here in this scripture, unlike Moses, this woman did not argue with the woman of God, with the man of God. This woman did not argue with the prophet. She was obedient. She was obedient. And she made out and her sons and got the vessels. That were needed. And she poured. And she poured. And she poured. Until all the vessels were full. We were not told how many vessels there were. But what we do know from the word of God. Is that the vessels that were full were enough. been able to bless you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. What is in your house that you can give this morning? God wants to bless. Hallelujah. God wants to bless you this morning. God wants to bless you. And I have one more scripture that I want to draw to your attention. I recognize that time is flying. But just one more scripture I want to draw to your attention this morning. And that is in Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 and a few verses there quickly. Because it speaks to us about the feeling of the 5,000. And if we look quickly, verse 15, when, and when it came evening, the disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude of here that they may go into the villages and buy themselves with tools. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give me them, give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded that the multitude sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and two fishes, and look, two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And I'm going to stop you. Because what I want us to see from this is how God multiplies again. Feeding 5,000 with just two loaves. Five loaves and two fish. God this morning wants to work on your behalf. What do you have yes. in your hand? Yes. What do you have in your house? What have you right here in Sugar Hill this morning that God can use for his honor and for his glory? What have you here? God is asking the question. What have we? God has given us What have you the 
this morning. My encouragement, dear four brothers and sisters in Christ, whatever the situation is, and whatever crisis you may find yourself, God is in the best of it. And he's able to do for you abundantly above all that you can ever ask, think, or desire. Our God this morning is our refuge. He is our strength. He is a very present help in time of trouble. Not absent this morning. My God is present. He is always with us. Let us be encouraged today that God is always with us in every situation, in every circumstance, in whatever you face this morning. God is with you. God bless you. Yes. Trust you. Sometimes you may think that it's a little bit, but it is just enough when you trust God. Amen? Let's all stand. Let the church say amen. Come on, let me sing. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Thank you. 
wants from us, he wants us to respond to his mandate. And brethren, a difference to preach the gospel and say whatever the Lord has said. Lift your hands before the Lord. We really want to bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for the body of Christ here at Sugar Hill. We thank you, God, for Pastor Myrtle. We thank you, God, for her faithfulness. We thank you for members that would not give up, members that are bent on serving you and being active workers in the harvest. And Lord, even as we've heard this word, we would have been impacted in so many different ways. Lord, if time would allow, there's so many things that we would want to do differently. God, but you're speaking to us as individuals. What will you do with what you have in your hands? And God, I pray even myself, Lord, I pray that I will be an effective witness. I pray that my brother will be an effective witness. What are we saying? What are we doing? Father, I pray that he will do it earnestly, purposefully. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your hands will be extended upon him and his family and all that concerns him. I pray, God, that the spirit of death will not affect, God, the momentum of the people that have been called by your name, but that we will be all that we want to be unto you. Lord, I pray for every man, every woman. I pray for this young lady this morning, God, that read the announcements. Lord, I pray that God, your grace indeed. I pray for the all-sufficiency of your grace to rest upon her. I pray that God, that she will stand out in the midst of strangers in a perverse generation and be not ashamed to call herself a Christian. Lord, I pray God, you will bless her not going out and her coming in, in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will make a difference. And we hear the speaker, oh my God, say that little is much when God is in it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, because you are in her, we say Christ in her, the hope of glory. Let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray God for the, the elders of this assembly. I pray for the women of God and those that are here. Father, I pray that their household will be sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray that the anointing of God, God will be resting in God in our homes. We pray that there will be a divine activation that will allow us, God, to be your hands and feet so that we will do great things in the earth. Let your will be done. Oh, God, in Sugar Hill, God, in this assembly, God, I pray for increase. I pray, God, for growth. I pray, God, for deliverance. I pray for revival. Jesus. And we give you thanks for it. Let's just sing this phrase again. Let the church say
right now, when this current is as intense as it is, and I don't know about you, Brian, but I believe that any part of the service is good enough for God to turn up, amen? Any part. So it's not about, uh, we thank God for the word, but I believe that any part of a service is good enough for God to do his business.